Roller Derby is actually a legitimate sport. Most people think that it's scripted or, you know, rigged. It's a legitimate sport. There is a lot of show involved with it. Um, we wear roller skates, not inlines. Inlines are cheating. So it is a real roller skating roller sport. Um, it's all women. It's flat track. I don't know if you remember, but in the 70s and 80s, they had the race track. The rules are different. We're not allowed to elbow. We're not allowed to clothesline. A legal hit is from here to here. So I can hit someone with the shoulder or the hip. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I do know that it was, I believe it was in the 30s. And it was all men. We were all male roller derby teams. Um, and then it progressed to women. I know it had it, it has its resurgence. It'll die off and then come back. And there's actually a couple of leagues that are trying to resurge the male teams and even intergender teams. A friend of mine, uh, Don Corleone, she started doing it about in June of last year, and she kept telling me to come out, come out, come out, come on, come on, get off your butt. And finally, I, things opened up in January this year, and I started, and I love it. <laughs> well, I just went to put, go put skates on for the first time in 20 years. I'm 38, so I was, you know, a little nervous about it, and I got completely hooked on the sport. I was skating. You mean I can hit her? Really, I can hit her as hard as I can. Are you kidding me? So I got hooked. I started about a year and a couple of months ago. I believe May of last year is when I started. How? Some friends of mine started doing it and said, hey, you want to come skate? And actually my friend Mary, who's the head coach, she and I have been friends for years. She was the fresh meat coach at the time. And so I said, oh, yeah, I'll go skate around, just put my skates on. Yeah, it was all over. After I figured out I could hit some, they told me I could hit somebody on roller skates, I was done. <laughs> Best thing ever invented. I'm the, I'm the captain of the Flaming Hips. My co-captain is uh, Michelle, who, who is Don Corleone. He's in Detroit right now, she's on vacation. Um, I'm not playing because I broke my foot. Uh, playing derby, most likely. Uh, that's what I can figure out, so I just hurt for a long time. And the doctor. But, um, so I'm the captain, so that's what I do. Is I, I make the lineups and I talk about stuff and I'm trying to make you know, different strategies and make up different lineups that will work good together and, you know, the captain's kind of like the coach of the mini teams, whereas Mary's like the coach of us all. Right now I'm a referee because I've been injured and I can't scrimmage and uh, I'm also the president of the league. <laughs> this year, because it's our first year being official, getting our organization official and we're trying to get our uh, non-profit status and all that stuff, it's been a lot of organization for everyone that's on the board. We've been just trying to... Uh, build standards that the league will run for like the next couple years, you know, like we're just trying to build standards of attendance, standards of rules, of behavior, you know, there's been all that stuff, we're, we're building it from the ground up. I mean, the people that started it did all the work convincing everyone to join roller derby, but then once we had it, we had to kind of create a structure. So that's really what we've been doing for the last six months is scheduling events and, and building an infrastructure that, that this organization can run from. If there is a season, it's a long season though. Our season pretty much this year has run from February until October. We'll have a break and then we do an exhibition bout in December. And we mix the teams up so that we, it kind of creates camaraderie. So in, you know, for roller derby for us, it's all year. We still skate. We still have practices twice a week. We don't stop. take anyone and we'll teach them how to skate and we'll teach them the ropes because we have the time to do that right now you know we have plenty of room for everybody so that's the only rule I think is that you have to be 21 once you come and start skating with us you have to wait three months before you can even be considered to join a team you have to pass something called skills assessment and then after that you may not get picked to be on a team or you may not pass skills assessment that's kind of that's a lot to do with like your own drive and there's girls that come here with different degrees of like ability or or 
fitness. You know, we have one girl that's a fitness trainer. So, of course, she picked up everything in the first two weeks. It was ridiculous. We couldn't even show her anything. And she got fast-tracked through. You know, when she was here for three months, she immediately was put on a team. She, and there's other girls that will be here for six months still not getting picked up for a team because they just, A, they don't show up for enough practices, or B, they're just, they were in such bad shape, it's just going to take them that much longer. You know, girls that go to the gym and run and do soccer, they, they excel at this sport because they're just natural athletes. Like, you have to be able to do five laps around the derby track in a minute or 20 in five minutes. You have to be able to give a whip or take a whip, which is something I don't know if you've seen yet, where when you're skating, you put your arm back and pull the other girl through. And then you have to be able to hit um, toe stop or T stop. Um, you have to be able to do your knee drops, one knee drop, a 180 turnaround, two knee drops, a baseball slide. These are all terms of things that you are taught to do over the first three months when you join. And there are things that are important. You have to learn how to fall because if you don't, that's how you get sprained ankles, sprained knees, you know. So those, are, those things are really important to help the girls from getting hurt. There's like rock stars, there really is. You know, there, there are people that everyone's heard of. And the more you get involved in Derby and the more you read about it, the more you go see bouts, like, it, there is a girl, they call the Michael Jordan of roller derby, you know? And uh, there's people that kind of like, create a reputation for themselves. And there's people that bond with each other. You know, um, one of the traditions of roller derby, and I don't know where it started, was the derby wife. And it was the idea that you met your soulmate in roller derby and they're like your best friend, so you, they become your derby wife. And it's kind of a joke, but people do. We have people that refer to each other as derby wives and stuff like that, so it's kind of funny. It's like definitely there's, there is female bonding. It's not universal. There are some leagues that are just gonna, because of proximity, uh, they, they, they hang out all the time, they practice together all the time. And you know, there's just different people you meet. The same with anything. You're gonna like who you're gonna like and so on and so forth, so. I'm just getting over a sprained knee, and before that I had a sprained ankle. And so I've been out for seven months off and on. Yeah, I had one right after the other. <laughs> I ran into the wall. I have a separated shoulder. I blew my eyebrow. Yeah. Reseparated my shoulder, so now I think I have ACL issues. My rigs are swollen feet. Can't take your skates <laughs> off. A herniated disc. Everyone's <laughs> got something. <laughs> but it's a great sport. I guess they say things happen in threes, but it would seem like every week it would be like, somebody, you know, fractured a rib or broke their tailbone or... The worst was a, a collapsed lung, partially collapsed lung. That was one of the worst ones. But definitely, you know, broken shoulder bones and... Yeah, I don't know. There's a broken foot and there's another girl that has a... Uh, she has two broken legs in her... Uh, two broken bones in her leg and she has a full cast from her thigh to her ankle and she can't even move, you know. So it, it, bad stuff happens, but... I guess they always come back. I don't know what that says about roller derby, but they come back afterwards. They heal up and they want to they come back. It starts off, the pivots start in the front, and they pretty much set the pace of the pack. And um, behind them, they, there's another six blockers. And each blocker has a little bit different strategy that they do. Uh, the, there's blocker one, two, and three. I'm not exactly sure which ones constitute which. I know one, one blocker helps the jammer through the pack. One makes, a, makes that path, and then another blocker just kind of tries to stop the opposing jammer. And then the jammer, she's essentially the fastest skater on the track, and she just tries to get through the melee and score as much as possible. 